Dr. Mindy here, and I am back with another food video for you. And this is really important because what I have to say on this video is going to make or break your ability to fast. Okay, I wanted to do this video for you guys because I'm seeing a lot of your comments where you're struggling to get into this fasting window and get those ketones and you're struggling to lose weight. And I've talked so much to you about how to fast and when to fast and eating windows that I feel like I also wanna come over here and talk about there are certain foods that you're eating that are making this fasting window, this fat burning system so much more sluggish. So on this video, I wanna talk about a combination of foods, certain foods you're gonna see, specifically ones with sugar in them that are going to make this switch over into the fat burning system much more difficult. So I wanna start with this idea. I just did a video before this one on glycemic index. The glycemic index of food is how high your blood sugar is going to spike when you eat that food. Now you could go and Google glycemic index on the majority of foods. So if you have any question about how a food is going to impact your blood sugar levels, there are two things you should do. You could Google it, just go to your computer and Google it, or you could get a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor and monitor it for a couple of weeks, or you can do the keto mojo. I've talked about both of those things. But the important thing to realize is that not all food is going to impact this sh blood sugar, the sugar burning system the same. And if you wanna be metabolically healthy, the best thing to do is bring that blood sugar down. Okay, with that awareness, there are some deadly, deadly combinations. Here's the first one, and this is the one that drives me so crazy. The worst combination that you could ever put together of foods is a high sugared food with a high fat food. So this is your everything from high fructose corn syrup to your um, processed, highly partially hydrogenated oils. That combination that you're gonna find at your Krispy Kreme donut store, that is the worst combination for your blood sugar. So when we put an inflammatory fat together with a high, high glycemic index sugar, we now have a problem. You are gonna have a really high blood sugar mark that's gonna make it very difficult to switch over. So the first thing to do is don't ever put that combination together. Now a good fat with a lower glycemic sugar like I explained on the last video, that's a different story. A bad inflammatory fat with a very high glycemic sugar, you are gonna become metabol metabolically challenged. Okay, so that's the number one rule. Second rule that I want to talk about that isn't discussed enough is these synthetic sweeteners, things like NutraSweet. So we have not given NutraSweet enough attention, I think, here on this channel. I get a lot of questions about can I drink diet drinks when I'm fasting, and we have to remember just because it, you look at your nutrition label and you see that it shows zero, zero grams of sugar, doesn't mean it's not going to spike your blood sugar. NutraSweet does two things. It spikes your blood sugar, sometimes almost as high as regular sugar, and it increases your appetite. So now you are more hungry. So the second food that combination or food that I'm gonna ask you to, to look at avoiding is anything with NutraSweet in it. The high fructose corn syrup with the high processed fats and the NutraSweet, this is making you very metabolically unflexible. We don't want that. Okay, so with those two things to the side, what are some other deadly combinations you need to look out for? Well, this is where the whites, anything white, so obviously white sugar, but now we have the white rice, white bread, white pasta. Those are highly processed foods. They're gonna spike your glycemic index. Okay, what about things like that are pasteurized? Anything that's pasteurized, so pasteurized milk, pasteurized honey. If you saw in the last video, I talked about raw honey, how much it has a lower glycemic index than a pasteurized honey. Pasteurized honey is gonna be higher. 
So when we pasteurize something, we increase the glycemic index. So going back to the raw versions. This also is why I'm a fan of raw milk over pasteurized milk. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that you're going to find anything that is the highly refined, refined white flours, refined sugars. If you see that word refined in the ingredient list, it also means that they've done something to it and that glycemic index has gone up. So these are kind of the biggies that I, what I see in, with you guys is that you're trying so hard with your fasting lifestyle and some of you are not realizing that these ingredients are tricking you up and they're making it so that you're not getting the result you want with fasting as easily. So really wanted to bring your, to your attention these problematic food combinations, some of those tricky words like refined and pasteurized that you wanna look out for, not a fan of NutraSweet, and stay out of Krispy Kreme donuts. That is not going to make your fasting lifestyle any easier. Okay, for starters, here's the biggest problem with sugar. It is a dopamine rush. We live in a dopamine saturated world. And one of the things we know is that when we are on these big highs with dopamine, that there becomes this moment where we can never feel happy because dopamine is the molecule of more. It is not the molecule of enough. So what dopamine does is it pulls you to something you get a dopamine hit and then you want to go after it again. So whether it's social media, whether it's a text on your phone, there's so, whether it's the ability to have DoorDash or some car service bring you food right at your front door, we are so dopamine saturated. And what happens with sugar, and I, want, I really, for those of you that are sugar addicted, I want you to think this through for a moment. You crave that sugar. And while you are literally in your brain thinking, I'm gonna go get some sugar, the dopamine's already kicked in. The dopamine, dopamine is like, yeah, you have a chocolate bar in the pantry, go get it. And the minute you're like, yep, I'm gonna go get it, the dopamine starts. And you haven't even put it in your mouth. And you're walking towards the chocolate bar, you get the chocolate bar, you eat it, and now all of a sudden you get this massive dopamine spike, you feel amazing, and then guess what it does to you? Your body goes, let's do that again. It is never satisfied. And the higher the sugar content, the more you are going to crave it. Full transparency, you wanna know what one of my favorite uh, desserts is red licorice. I literally used to go to the movies all the time and I red licorice. I even take the ends and I drank, check this out, in my 20s, I took r these red licorice and I'd bite the end of each one and I'd use it as a straw in my Diet Coke. Now, I wanna tell you, I was 30 pounds heavier than I am now. I w had chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, I wasn't as happy as I am now. Like there was so, I, I crashed every afternoon at three in the afternoon. So this dopamine rich experience at the movies was not serving the rest of my day, of the time, of my 24 hour cycle. So I get it. I get the, the, the desire for sugar, but I also got to a point where it was just, I was never able to be fulfilled when I went down a sugar path. Okay, second thing, when you are eating sugar, it puts you not only on this dopamine roller coaster, but on a blood sugar roller coaster. So you're getting this really high spike and then a crash, and then a really high spike and then a crash. That's a major problem because you, you eat it, your dopamine brain is like, give me more. You might be like, well, I don't have time to give you more. And then an hour later, you're like, oh my God, if I don't eat, I'm going to kill somebody. And your moods go with this. When, the, when you're on these roller coaster, blood sugar roller coaster, you're happy, you're sad, you're, you see possibility, you're irritable, your moods are all over that place. And if you're a perimenopause or a postmenopausal woman, oh my God, like add some depletion of hormones with a, uh, with a, a sugar roller coaster and you're not gonna be a very fun person to be around. So we want, it will increase hunger and it will increase the erratic potential I'll put it that way, the erratic potential of your moods. So the reason I want you to try what I'm calling a seven day sugar challenge here is that because what I want you to see is that you will be happier. Maybe not in the beginning, we'll talk about that in a moment. You will, your moods will be better, your blood sugar will be more stable, you will have more energy. Here's the seven day challenge. I want you for seven days to take sugar completely out of your diet. Now, if that sounds horrible, here's what I want you to know. I have coached literally hundreds of thousands of people through the process of changing their eating habits. And I will tell you that the first three days are the hardest. So you gotta just say, 
I'm not gonna eat sugar, and the three days, first three days are gonna be brutal. Now, I can tell you when I went was giving up my sugar addiction, I when I would wanna go back to sugar, my brain would always say, okay, I want that cupcake, I want that piece of cake, I want that red licorice, but do I want the three days of having to extreme discipline to get through the cravings that are gonna come from me eating that? And I realized, I didn't after a while. I didn't want that three days of agony and it was the thing that stopped me from going to sugar. So if this seven day challenge is gonna be new to you, I'm just gonna say, know that the first three days will be hard and then after that it gets easier. Observe in the seven days, what I want you to do is observe your moods. That's the first thing to note here. How, are, how do you feel after seven days? Are you more stable in your thoughts? Are you more stable in your emotions? Report back, let me know. Second thing I want you to observe in this seven days is your hunger. So I talked about this. It puts you on this roller coaster. As high as your blood sugar spikes is as low as it'll go. When it goes low, your body says, give me, give me more food, give me sugar, because I need to get it up immediately. So after seven days giving up sugar, I wanna know, are you less hungry? I think you'll notice you might even make better food choices. Number three that I want you to absor observe after the seven day challenge is how well you move. So every time your blood sugar spikes from sugar, there is a potential, a possibility of a chronic inflammatory situation coming in where you're just gonna, all this inflammation is gonna come flooding into your body and now you're gonna feel stiff, your brain's gonna feel a little foggy and you might notice when you sit down, stand up, you know, I do this sometimes like when I get up in the morning, if I get up and I'm like walking first thing out of, the, out of my bed and I'm like, oh, Oh God, like I am so stiff today. The first thing I think is what did I eat yesterday? Is there something that I ate? Now, again, I struggle. I try so hard to not eat sugar. Uh, it, do, it does fall into my diet every once in a while, but um, it's always high quality. But still, sometimes even when I have maybe dessert at night, I might notice more stiffness the next day. So notice how you move. You might have better joint mobility because the inflammation comes down. Number four, I want you to notice how you think. This goes back to the dopamine issue that we have with sugar, and this is really important. When you are dopamine addicted, you are never fully satisfied. So one of the ways of getting off of dopamine is start with what you eat. Change sugar and see if all of a sudden the other dopamine rich things that you do just don't have that hold on you as much. Dopamine is sneaky. And the more dopamine rich environments from, you know, everything from maybe, you know, something that you bought that gave you a dopamine rush to a goal you're chasing to, like I said, the text and the social media dopamine rush, all of that can change when you pull one dopamine rich activity out of the equation and it calms the whole dopamine system down. So if you stop eating sugar, all of a sudden now you're calming down that dopamine uh, situation and you might find you don't want to overeat as much. You might find that you're satisfied more in life. Like, let's look at how you're thinking after seven days without sugar. And again, report back after seven days. Okay, number five, last one here. And then I've got a bonus that I really wanna talk to you about. So number five is look at how your cravings change. So one of my favorite studies ever done on fasting was done on the every other day diet. And they took people who had horrible food habits. And what they did is they told them, eat whatever you want one day, and then the next day, fast all day. And then eat whatever you want, and then fast all day. And so over the course of a year, they saw that their food habits changed. Now, this isn't fasting. This is a sugar fast, so it's a little bit of fasting. But what happens when you take the bad food out of the equation is the microbes in your gut stop sending you signals saying, hey, feed me, feed me, feed me. So when it comes to sugar, one of those microbes is a fungus called candida. And when you actually are feeding candida, it's, it has a party in, in your gut. And all of a sudden it will, it'll tell you, feed me more sugar, feed me more sugar. So when you pull sugar out of your diet for seven days, you starve that candida out and it stops talking to you and telling you to crave more sugar. Doesn't take long for this kind of switch to happen. It can be very, very quick. So notice, observe what you, what you crave. So it's moods, it's hunger, it's how you move, it's how you think and how you crave 
crave. And when you change all of that, now all these other results get so much either. Now your weight loss results, your sleeping, your happiness, it all changes because you pulled yourself off of a blood sugar roller coaster and a dopamine roller coaster with one major food. Okay. A major concept when it comes to sugar and especially how it relates to weight loss. So here's the big picture to think about. Remember, let's go back to the sugar burner, fat burner mode. So when you are eating any kind of food, you are raising your blood sugar. When you are not eating, your blood sugar comes down and you start to switch over into the, the fat burning energy system. So the trick to getting over into this fat burning energy system as quickly as possible is to not let your blood sugar get super high. So that really, you know, we talk about vegetables and meats and things like that. That's pretty easy to not let that blood sugar get so high. But when it comes to sugar, it's a lot more difficult, which is why I want to bring to your attention a concept called the glycemic index. So the glycemic index, think of it as like a rating for how high that blood sugar is going to go. And the higher that blood sugar goes, the longer it's going to take you to switch over into the fat burning energy system. So this is really important especially when it comes to sugar. So in the keto movement, a lot of people got really excited about things like stevia and monk fruit and urethritol because they have a glycemic index of zero, which means when you eat these, these sugars, you cook with them, you use them in your food products, there's gonna be very little to no spike in your blood sugar, which is going to help you move over into this fat burning energy system a lot quicker. But then we have all these other sugars kind of in the middle. We have a few sugars here on the end that I'm gonna talk about. And if you're like me, I don't really love cooking with stevia. I'm not a stevia fan. So I've had to come up with some new ways to approach sugar so that I can enjoy it and still get over into the fat burner energy system much quicker. So I wanted to bring to your guys' attention that not all sugars have the same glycemic index and some of these sugars are gonna actually surprise you. So let's start with the, the highest glycemic index and well actually the highest highest glycemic index I don't even have here. It's high fructose corn syrup and it has a glycemic index of 90. This is zero. So there's your spec, that, that shows you the real, the range we're looking at. So corn syrup, you're gonna find that in your Coca-Colas, you're gonna find that in a lot of your processed foods, highest glycemic index possible. Then we move down to sugar. So this is just organic cane sugar. I did some research that was really interesting. So this sugar has a glycemic index of around 68. Now, when it's organic, the glycemic index goes down a little bit, which I think is interesting and I'm gonna speculate, I couldn't find any information on it, but I'm gonna speculate it's because sugar like CNH sugar is so highly processed that it brings that glycemic index up. Whereas organic, and then if you go organic raw, you're now as clo closer to the original source so that glycemic index is gonna go down. But this bag right here, this organic sugar is a, is a glycemic index of 68. Now let's go to brown sugar. A lot of people think brown sugar is one of those things that, oh, it's healthier. Well, on a glycemic index, it's not necessarily healthier. It is, has a glycemic index of 64. Okay, so now let's go down and let's see what about if we do something like dates. And actually before dates, let me give you another one that I don't have here, is honey. A lot of people are like, well, what about honey? Honey has a glycemic index of 55. So this 68, honey's 55, raw honey actually brings it down into the 30s. Okay, what about dates? A lot of you guys are swapping out date sugars, you're doing dates. Uh, a lot of vegan foods have dates in them, but if you're not careful, dates are really high on the glycemic index as well. Dates have a glycemic index of 42. Okay, what about maple syrup? Now maple syrup is at 
55. So maple syrup is between honey and dates. And then my favorite of all of them is coconut sugar. This is what we cook with in my household. It has a glycemic index of 35 which is awesome. So now let's like, when I'm looking at putting a, a recipe together, we're over here in the 50s and 60s, and this, I'm at 35. So this is, this has a very similar sweetness to me as cane sugar, it, same, feels really good to cook with, it, it dissolves pretty nicely, and it's gonna be lower on the glycemic index, again, making sure that I can switch over into fat burning mode quicker. Then we go to agave. Agave is 10. Now agave is tricky and we'll talk about this in a moment, but agave, you know, you can, a lot of people are using agave in cooking. They're using agave, you'll see it in your ingredient list. So it's down here on as 10, which is great. And then we have the zeros of urethritol, monk fruit, and stevia. I don't really cook with any of those, but I can tell you in a product that I buy, my taste tends to like monk fruit better than stevia. Um, but again, it's all personal choice. So why I bring this all to your attention is I really want you to focus when you're cooking with sugar, when you're leaning into sugar, you want to start thinking about the type of sugar you're using, especially over the holidays, as we start to lean into more of these, of we're all at home cooking more, I want you to realize that you can make a really easy swap out like coconut sugar for regular cane sugar and you're bringing that glycemic index down, moving you into the fat burner system a little bit more. Last thing I'm gonna say, always, 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 we wanna test this with our own personal microbiome. It is your gut bacteria that's gonna regulate these blood sugar levels. So if you've been on a lot of antibiotics, there's a good chance you don't have the right bacteria to bring your blood sugar down fast enough to go into this other, uh, this other energy burning system, which is why you gotta test it yourself. There's two ways to test. A continuous glucose monitor. We like NutriSense. Uh, if you want a link to that, just put NutriSense in the comments. And we also like Keto Mojo, which is a pricking your finger one. And you can put Keto Mojo in the comments too, and my team will send you a link for both of those. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free, and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast, among many other things. All you gotta do is click on this link right here and enjoy. I really want to talk about those of you that are struggling to bring your fat, your blood sugar down. What do you do? On page 167, I have, let me see how many hacks I have for bringing your blood sugar down. I put in here five, nope, six different hacks. So I'm going to briefly go through all six. Um, one of the things that I've done in the book is really create lists. Uh, this is based, this book is based off my clinical experience guiding hundreds of thousands of women and men through the fasting experience. So these six hacks I know are tried and true. And for some of you, one of these hacks is going to work and for others, you're going to need to apply all six. So here we go. This is for those of you that are really trying to bring your blood sugar down and you're struggling. So here is hack one, number one. Hold on, I gotta get back to the page you might need to fast longer. I know that's hard, like, you know, especially if blood sugar is high, but remember that it's when we get to a level where 15 hours is comfortable, 17 hours is comfortable, but we're not seeing the blood sugar changes that we want, then what we're gonna wanna do is try to throw some longer fasts at your body to help get rid of all the excess sugar that has been stored in your tissues. So remember, when we're fasting, the body has to break sugar down. So it goes to the liver, it goes to fat, it goes to your muscles to pull from its sugar reserves. If you have a lot of sugar reserves, then it has a lot to pull from. So on your meter, you're gonna see that your blood sugar is, is staying higher than you would like it, even in a fasted state. When we go into those longer fasts, what happens is that we start to force the body to release more and more of that stored sugar. Um, with those longer fasts, that um, can start to cause more of the release of the blood sugar, which ultimately makes your blood sugar levels on a consistent basis more within what we like to see it somewhere around 70 to 90 milligrams per deciliter 
in uh, Western standard um, measurements. So that's hack number one. Okay, hack number two. You guys have heard me talk about this and that is vary your fasts. So this is really important because remember the idea is we want to create a hormetic stress and then kind of give the body a chance to adapt. When you're fasting 15 hours every single day, your body gets into a rhythm that it becomes comfortable with. But in order to get that blood sugar to come down, we need to make the body a little uncomfortable. So we do that by varying our fasts. 15 hours one day, 24 the next, 13 hours the next day, 48 the next. It's in that variation. It's like you're pushing in and you're, you're asking the body to adapt and then you're giving it a recovery. And then you're pushing in and asking it to adapt and you're giving it a recovery. So I talk about that in, in the book so you can see how to do that for you. Um, remember varying your fast women needs to be done to your hormonal cycle, depending on where you are, even postmenopausal women, which is what the whole book is about. Okay. Third hack is you want to avoid all, and I mean all processed foods. So one thing we've seen in our reset Academy is that when you are eating a lot of foods that are packed with the bad oils, and this can happen even at nice restaurants. Um, when you are looking at those bad, eating bad oils, eating a lot of refined carbs, refined sugar, it causes your blood sugar to go up too much. And it's interesting because when we come to fasting, we get so in love with how we feel that sometimes, and put it in the comments if this is you, sometimes what happens is we start to think that fasting is our major tool for health. I was having a conversation the other day with a friend who said she was starting to look at exercise different. She's at four, her, she just turned 40 and she was saying, you know, I feel like I used to exercise to keep my weight where I want it to be. And I'm now realizing that I exercise for my mental health. And, um, and I said, do you think that's because you're now fasting more? And so your weight is no longer an issue for you. And she was like, yeah, actually, I, th I think that is what's happening. And what I, I tell you that to say that what I see on the fasting journey is that we get so many great results. We forget that something as simple as eating the wrong oils, having too many refined carbohydrates could be causing a, more of a blood sugar spike than necessary. So make sure if you can't bring that blood sugar down, the first ingredient I would really go after is the bad oils. And I have lists of all the bad oils and good oils in here. I have a whole bunch of uh, appendices in here that you guys have can hopefully take to the grocery store and, and use um, if you need to, or take pictures of that have lists of all these foods in there. So this, the third one is avoid all processed foods. Okay. Fourth hack is love on your liver. So the liver is going to make ketones. The liver is going, and the only way it knows to make ketones is blood sugar has to go down. So there is this switch from sugar burner to fat burner that requires your liver to be happy. So I put in here my favorite ways that you can love on your liver, um, but it is the hardest working organ in your body. And if you haven't been supporting it, it may be something as simple as some of these liver hacks that I wrote in here to be able to, and, and to free your liver up to make that switch over and to making ketones and to be able to allow you to regulate your blood sugar. So you might need to love on your liver. Okay. Hack number five. This one's a really good one. Support your adrenal glands. So the reason I really want to emphasize this, is if you've been in a cortisol rich world and you're, you're a rushing woman, uh, there is a chance that your adrenals are, are tired. Now, adrenals don't just wear out. It's not like they're an organ that, that we, this idea that adrenals are exhausted is a little bit of a, a myth. The adrenals are constantly communicating from the brain that the hypothalamus and pituitary have to tell the adrenals, hey, there's a crisis going on in here. We need to increase cortisol and decrease insulin. So I've talked about this. I talk about the high hormonal hierarchy in here. So if you've been living a very rushed, stressed out life, 
it's possible that this feedback loop is constantly going. And you will know that it's constantly going because you react to stress very quickly. And then the last piece, and this is a big one, is the last hack is you might have to remove toxins. Um, and I put, I give a lot of, of examples of obesogens in the book that you're gonna wanna avoid, but toxins will make you insulin resistant. Toxins will spike your blood sugar. I mean, think about this for a moment. It can be something as simple as you put on your favorite perfume that has chemicals in it, you breathe it in, and it creates a blood sugar spike or it makes it creates an insulin spike in your body. It's you know, we don't it's not just food that's spiking glucose and insulin. Stress spikes it, toxins spike it, spike it, uh, exercise can spike it. Um, but I mean, you, we have to start to have this toxic conversation because we live in the most toxic time in human history. Okay, you trying to maximize your weight loss? Apple cider vinegar may be the key. Go check out this video where I show you exactly when, how, and why you wanna use it for weight loss. Apple cider vinegar changes your microbiome of your gut. This good bacteria is gonna to help to bring your blood sugar down and make it so that you can switch over into the fat burning state